Thank you very much. Um, sitting on that side, it feels a bit like speed dating when people come up here with um, people giving um, their presentations on thoughts. I firstly just wanted to commend the Construction Industry Federation for organizing this conference because I think it's hugely valuable to bring together um, different thoughts and views and perspectives on the public works contracts and issues that perhaps need to be looked at in the context of the review. Um, what I just wanted to uh, comment on, and it's come through in a number of the speakers, is looking at effective dispute resolution and the issue of costs that arise in that context. Um, I think, yes, it is important that we move away from an adversarial um, system of contracting and that the parties work in a more collaborative way, but with the best will in the world, there will always be issues that will not always be capable of being resolved, and having an effective means by which disputes can be resolved is very, very important in any contract. As it stands under the Public Works contracts, what's anticipated is, um, firstly, conciliation, which um, has been alluded to is perhaps more akin to adjudication in the form it's constructed, um, followed by arbitration. There are some variations with some of the, 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 the minor forms of contract in terms of dispute resolution, but that's essentially the process. And what's anticipated is that in respect of conciliation, the usual rules apply in terms of costs, that the parties will each bear their own costs. But there's a little twist to the tale that even if the, the, the recommendation requires payment in favor of the uh, contractor in order for the contract, and if that is disputed um, by, the, by, the, um, by the contracting authority, um, that, that recommendation, even though um, it won't be binding, but it, it will be binding in the interim and payment will have to be made, but only if the contractor puts up a bond for the full amount of the award. So the contractor disputes, potentially disputes, or the employer disputes um, the recommendation, it gets referred on to arbitration. And this is where things get even more tricky, because in July 2011, um, a change was brought in. Just to sort of backtrack a little bit, generally speaking, in arbitration and litigation, the costs follow the event. So if a contractor or indeed an employer has a legitimate claim which is pursued through arbitration or the courts and they are successful in establishing that they were correct in pursuing that claim and they have an entitlement, generally speaking, they will be entitled to recover the costs of having to take it through arbitration. In July 2011, an, a change was brought in that essentially said that a contractor had to sign up to a provision that said if a dispute under the contract is referred to arbitration, each party will bear their own costs in the proceedings, regardless of the outcome. So even if a contractor has a legitimate entitlement, um, is pursuing it or pushed to pursue it through arbitration, and he is successful in establishing that, he will always have to bear his own costs of the arbitration. Now, those costs can be substantial, and I think particularly in relation to smaller contractors, where the costs of, of not recovering their full entitlement under a contract can be even more significant, but yet the cost of pursuing through to arbitration can actually take away the benefit of any successful outcome of that. And as um, uh, Anthony Hussey has, has indicated, there are issues around that in terms of access to justice, so that absolutely is something I think that needs to be looked at in the context of the review of the contracts. Thank you very much.